Good morning. My name is Anita Kelly, and I'm an extension fisheries specialist with UAPD. I actually work in the low note disease lab and uh, run that lab up there with Hugh Tomford and we have a technician, Satya Kubaran, that also works with us. And today, I want to kind of walk you through some of the career and educational opportunities that our students have. And during this presentation, um, you'll notice that there will be some pictures of students, and I've also got names and uh, some of the different associations that they're currently employed by. So you can see the opportunities that actually come out of this. Um, I was going to go over the uh, center a little bit, but I think Dr. Goodwin did a good job of showing that uh, the state of Arkansas does raise a lot of different fish. So I'm going to give you a little bit of an introduction and talk a little bit about why aquaculture and fisheries are important, not only to our state, but to uh, actually the whole nation. And then talk about some of the state, federal, and private opportunities that are out there as far as careers are concerned. And then, of course, talk about university and college opportunities that are also available. So why is aquaculture important? Well, it produces food for people. One of the things that we all know is that our nation's uh, uh, oceans are being overfished, and so we're going to have to look for alternate sources of getting fish protein. So aquaculture is one of those uh, ways that we can achieve that. It also produces fish for stocking. We have several uh, people in the state who love to go fishing. Um, and one of the neatest things is to actually take our little trailer out and let kids go fishing because they really enjoy that. So being able to take them out into a, a pond or something that actually has fish in it and they can catch fish really uh, easily kind of spurs that on in them and, and gets them fishing. Um, we also do a lot of culturing of endangered and threatened species. Um, for instance, uh, uh, this is a picture of a sturgeon here uh, in the Mississippi River. A lot of species of sturgeon are actually endangered in that river. And so we have different uh, agencies that are actually involved in producing some of these fish and we can stock them back in uh, so they aren't uh, lost forever. So why is fisheries important? Well, one of the neatest statistics I came across was by 2030, the fishery, fishing pressure on public wa waters is expected to double. Can you imagine this doubling in by the year 2030 and you'd basically be shoulder to shoulder with somebody. Mm -hmm. So we need to be able to open up more areas for people to go fishing, make sure that the fishing that's out there is really good in different areas to kind of spread people out a little bit. Okay. The other thing too is that actually in Arkansas the economic impact of fishing is over $440 million a year. And few people know that we actually have a commercial industry in this state as well. You may be driving down the road and you'll see a lot of these fish places that sell buffalo or catfish that they've caught out of the river or the local lakes. And um, this is also very important. I wasn't able to get uh, up-to-date information on how much that contributes, but uh, licenses are required in the state. So let's move in a little bit to state opportunities then and talk a little bit about this. Um, there are conservation departments that are out there. Um, Arkansas is the Arkansas Game of Fish. He took the bird. Well, it was his. No, oh, was it? Uh, was it? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, well, that's all right. Um, we call it the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission. In Mississippi, it's the Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries, and Parks. In Missouri, it's the Missouri Department of Conservation. So they all have different names, but they all employ uh, people who are fisheries biologists, and they basically look at these lakes and determine, okay, What's our population structure in there, and do we need to regulate uh, fishing on this lake so that we can continue having good populations here for others to fish? Um, we have uh, several students that have gone not only to our own Arkansas Game and Fish Commission, but to other states and work at their Game and Fish Commissions as well in this capacity. Our students are actually pretty well sought after. Uh, there are some state opportunities with regard to um, hatcheries. We have several state hatcheries in the state. One is Joe Hogan that's right in uh, Lone Oak. Uh, we have a current graduate that just um, got a job at the Corning Hatchery, which is more of a cool water one. They deal with walleye and sauger um, and some of the trout species. So um, they can get actually jobs that uh, relate to raising fish. Believe it or not, our program does not have a law enforcement component to it, but we have a couple of students who have actually gotten into uh, being a conservation officer. Uh, both of these students are with the Missouri Department of Conservation, but they enforce the laws that uh, fishing regulations and the hunting regulations that are within that state. So that's another opportunity that's out there. And then we have some that are involved in education. Now, when I mean education, in this sense, I'm talking about 
uh, individuals who actually maybe work for game and fish or work at, for instance, the Del Toro Rivers uh, Nature Center. Okay, this is Allison Neely who actually does work there. Um, she's a, a museum program specialist, so she does a lot of educational materials for school children uh, and keeps them up to date. We also have several uh, high school and grade school teachers, uh, not only throughout Arkansas, but also in other states that have um, graduated from our program here at UAPD. We also have state water quality agencies. We have the Arkansas Department, Department of Environmental Quality is ours. Um, other states call it different things. Um, and we do have people that work there. They come out knowing what water quality should be. They want to make sure that the water quality is good so that it's safe to drink, that it's uh, safe for people to swim in, and that it's safe for the fish and the uh, aquatic organisms to live in. Let's move on to federal opportunities. There are several federal opportunities that are out there. Um, the first one most people think of is the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services. Um, we have several students who have um, jobs with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Again, they can be fisheries biologists that go out and look at lakes uh, and uh, that are part of the national system versus just the state system. Um, they also work in hatcheries. Uh, they work in uh, regulations, uh, law enforcement. So we have uh, individuals from Mars that have uh, expanded the United States as well. Um, again, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, we have federal hatcheries. Um, we have one individual who graduated in 92 that worked at Warm Springs and she's now back in Arkansas and basically checks our triple A grass carp producers to make sure that their uh, triple A grass carp are uh, indeed triple A sterile and she uh, issues the U.S. Fish and Wildlife certification for them. Um, we also have the National Marine Fisheries Service. Um, this is a service that basically deals with mainly our oceans, the, you know, um, Atlantic, Pacific, the Gulf of Mexico. Um, we have one student that actually did an internship that's out there. We have one stu student that got his uh, master's degree now and is working uh, with the National Marine Fisheries Institute. And there's other types of federal agencies that most people don't think of when you think about culture and fisheries. One is the Bureau of Land Management. Okay? Out west, that's a big deal. Um, but they still have water on these lands. Some of these people, when they go out there and work, they're not only doing fisheries work, but they're also doing wildlife work. So a lot of things that they learn in fisheries and aquaculture, they can actually extend to the wildlife as well. Um, National Park Service, we have uh, a couple of individuals who actually work for them. The U.S. Forest Service, again, when they're doing things like um, cutting down trees, they have to look and see, okay, what's this going to do to the water? That's um, and they like to keep uh, uh, fishing and stuff on their um, private land or the national parks. They like to keep those uh, up so that people can come in and do that. We also have a uh, research service that's associated with the USDA. Um, we used to have on uh, the campus there at UAPB, but it's now over in Stuttgart. Uh, they also do uh, research with regard to not necessarily fisheries, but with aquaculture. And then an extension of the conservation officer is actually the U.S. Marshal Service. We actually have uh, an individual who is working as a U.S. Marshal. So this moves us into some of the private uh, opportunities that are out there. Dr. Um, Goodwin actually told you about uh, how important aquaculture is uh, to the state. And so you can look at fish farms, okay? Um, there's a lot of catfish farms, a lot of bait fish farms. Um, there's a lot of different types of jobs that are out there. You can be a, a technician on this farm. You can be a farm manager. Um, you could be uh, on the sanding crew. You could work as a hatchery personnel person. Uh, you could work, some of these places even have little research areas that they actually are doing research themselves. So um, there's a lot of different opportunities. We have a constant call for these type of, type of people. So we have the need out there for, uh, to get more graduates out. We do have some people that have gone to work for some private companies. One of them's actually gone to Guatemala, and the other one is working out for a trout company out in California. When we talk about aquaculture and fisheries, there's a lots of different kinds out there that people don't realize. Um, there's uh, the culture of alligators um, here. So we do produce alligators for the meat, uh, as well as the skins. Um, and that's, you know, the American alligator, for a while there was endangered. I think it's off the endangered amount of the threatened list now. But these producers actually put so many alligators back into the wild. So not only are they raising them and producing them, they're also helping with the um, wild populations by increasing them. Um, there's eel culture. Um, Dr. Goodwin talked a little bit about um, shrimp culture, but you've got clams, you've got crabs, 
all kinds of, not it's, only just fresh water, but also. Is uh, alligator farming on the horizon for UAPB? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know if anybody that's brave enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's been well developed in, in yeah. Louisiana, and actually yeah. it's shrunk because the wild population has come back. So that's been yeah. But I was thinking in terms of, uh, uh, for the market. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, I don't know that the market's really there because, yeah. you know, I mean, not that many people do as much with alligator uh, skins anymore. You see alligator meat occasionally in the, in the store but in our restaurant menus, but I've never had anybody call me and ask me where can I get it. So I don't know about the issue. Well, That's something use? that would have to be looked at. And then, of course, there's all kinds of different operations. Um, the pond system, like what we have a lot in, in our uh, state, down along the coast, you can also have ponds that are socially closely associated with uh, salt water. Um, these are net pens that are actually out in the uh, middle of a bay. And then, of course, if you don't have uh, soil that will hold water very well, then they sometimes will bury tanks and use those to uh, fill up with water and then produce fish. So there's lots of different types of, of things. Obviously, if we had students that were working uh, in an area like this, uh, they would have to have some boating skills. They learn those boating skills in our fisheries classes. They learn boating safety, they learn that they should be wearing uh, life vests, that type of thing. Um, then there's other types of opportunities that are out there. We get students that, you know, they get a degree in aquaculture and fisheries kind because of they like it, but then they go and do something else. And that's perfectly good too because they get uh, put into uh, other types of industries that may or may not be associated with us. Um, we have a couple people that work actually for different food companies, and then uh, one student that's actually just a trucker. Um, one of the things that's probably on the rise is um, uh, hydroponics, or aquaponics, I should say, and that's raising uh, food and fish together. Uh, we see this a lot more on the individual household level, more than a industrial size level, because the economics just aren't there yet for industry size levels. But you can produce a lot of good fruit and vegetables uh, with fish. Basically, the fish provide the fertilizer for your food, and the plants then take and take out all the nasty stuff out of the water for your fish. So basically, it's a type of soilless gardening uh, that's starting to emerge. Here we've got some of uh, pictures of some of the things that uh, they do. They have to be able to do a little bit of chemistry. Uh, we have water quality kits. They have to be able to use, utilize um, different types of meters to be able to calibrate them. They have to be able to participate, I don't know if you can see it this well, but that is a uh, cormorant there on bird control because we do get birds that come in and will eat the profits out of the, the fish farmers' farms if they're not uh, careful. And then of course they have to be able to uh, have basic, basic math skills where they can actually weigh and, and measure fish and know that they're loading the truck with the proper amount. Um, there are also private opportunities out there. Uh, we have uh, individuals who actually work uh, for private consulting firms, and this may be individuals who farm, pen, farm pond uh, owners may call up and say, I've got this farm pond, I don't know what to stock in it, can you recommend something for me? I don't want to go catfish, bluegill, bass, I want to do something different. Um, and so these individuals actually make a living out of doing something like that. Or they may um, have problems with the uh, weeds in their ponds, so they may call a person who has a private company. Um, we also have individuals who work for, uh, for instance, Pine Bluff Arsenal, uh, where they actually do things like test air quality. Again, because they've had um, the experience with the different kinds of meters and machines that they do in our labs, they're qualified to have these kinds of jobs. Um, and then, of course, they can work for biological companies as well, and we have one that does that. Um, some more of the consulting aspects that not only with uh, fisheries, but also with uh, aquaculture, is that we may get things where, you know, my, my pond, all my fish are dead, what's going on? Okay, so we have to go out there and normally it's a water quality problem and tell them what they need to do that, with that. If they want to design a system, whether it be indoor or outdoor, they can get uh, a consultant to that. Um, disease diagnostics, uh, usually within the state, uh, they come to one of the four labs uh, that we have, um, or they'll go to some of the guys at the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission. Uh, but usually there's not too many people in the consulting for disease diagnostics. Uh, nutrition, again, that's more of a, a university type thing and most people will go there, but there are some people who will recommend uh, different diets. In other words, why you do not feed dog food to your catfish and expect them to grow, all right? Um, 
And then, of course, I already talked uh, about the small pond and lake management and being able to maintain um, populations so that when the little kids go out and they go fishing and they catch this many fish, they want to go fishing again. Uh, we also have one individual who is a graduate of our program who is a veterinarian, actually here in Pine Bluff. So um, our program leads to some of the more specialized stuff, like whether it be uh, a vet school or medical school or dental school, any of those kinds of things. Um, so it could kind of be the prerequisite to that. There are some other uh, employment opportunities in sales and service. Um, for instance, You've all seen on TV the little lure that works, you know, they put it in there and they show you how the fish is going to react to the lure. Um, or you've seen the fishing shows maybe where they're selling a certain rod and reel or they're selling a certain type of boat or motor. Um, these people are all um, usually generally have a fisheries background uh, to them. There are some chemicals that you can use in food fish and there are other chemicals you can't. And being able to tell people what they can and can't use legally in the United States is very important. So we have people who also will um, sell chemicals and other types of equipment to aquaculture. One of my favorites uh, is actually something that a lot of people don't think about working for is the public aquaria or zoos. Um, these are very important. Uh, you have to be able to understand the organisms. And we're not necessarily just talking about fish here. Uh, we could be talking about marine mammals as well. So, um, and even some of the birds that come in, like penguins. You go to a lot of zoos now, they have uh, penguin exhibits. You have to be able to know what these organisms require, what their food requirements are. You have to know what water quality requirements are, because you have to maintain all this stuff. Otherwise, you get a sick animal out there, and the public comes in and sees it. Uh, you're going to have to deal with the public relations part of that. So um, that's another thing that they do. They educate the public on, on these different uh, types of organisms that are there. A lot of public zoos and aquarium Aquaria also have a research department, so they can look at getting different types of animals in. Um, one of the big things that they've done a lot of research in is um, sharks. You know, great whites, they've always tried to keep in captivity, and they've never been able to do that. And they still haven't figured out exactly how to keep the big ones in, in captivity. And then, of course, you can always uh, work your way up and become a director. Um, another thing that we can do is, of course, you can get into research. You can get into the private sector, university research, you can do state or federal agency research. Um, we have a couple of students that actually work at UAMS um, in doing research there. Uh, we also have Ed Butner who got his degree at UAPB and went on to get his PhD and now works uh, in the Department of Agriculture there on campus of the School of Agriculture. I would be remiss if I didn't mention the educational opportunities in graduate schools. Uh, our students who do well in our program are well sought after by uh, other schools for their graduate programs. Uh, we currently have people at the University of Minnesota, at Texas A&M, uh, at Baylor University, uh, LSU, at University of Maryland, Eastern Shore. Um, so we have a lot of students out there that are basically all over the country and um, pursuing uh, further uh, education. So. Uh, and once they get their master's degree, they always can go in to work for any of these uh, previous things that I mentioned. Okay, they just go in at a little higher level, they make a little bit more money. Once they get a PhD, you can always go back and work for these same companies. You generally make a little bit more money. Or you can come back and get into the university system or the community college system, and you can actually teach fisheries and aquaculture to other students so that they can go out and um, spread the word. Um, I wanted to end on this slide because I think it's a, a pretty important one. Um, we know the catfish industry is down, but the current and continued uh, demand for people in aquaculture and fisheries is, is really high. Um, there's a lot of different types of employment opportunities, and I didn't touch on them all here. I just kind of gave you a, a very broad overview. And in each one of these, there's quite a bit of a chance for advancement and moving up the chain. Um, so. Uh, it's not something that I wouldn't recommend people do. So if people are interested, I, I would highly recommend that you go out and talk to Nikia Walker Kennedy, who is here um, with UAPB. And um, she is our undergraduate recruiter. And she will get the necessary information about scholarships and that type of thing to anybody who wishes to come here. And with that, I will end. And is there any questions? Got one. Yeah. You mentioned that. I mean, fishing pressure is expected to double in 2030. Mm -hmm. Can you estimate how that would translate into economic impact dollars for farmers? 
Or will there be any? Boy, you know, uh, yes, I'm sure there will be because we have uh, individual fish farmers who actually do things like stock largemouth bass, they stock uh, uh, red ear in private farm ponds. Sometimes they even get um, bids and contracts with the state or the federal government to stock different waters throughout the United States. So I'm sure there's going to be an economic impact there. Um, but I'm not an economist. I, I, I couldn't tell you that, yeah, it's going to double their profits because I don't know for sure uh, of what it will do. But it's definitely on the rise. I mean, if, just to see how many farms that we have in Arkansas that are the largest farms, you know, in the world, uh, it's just amazing to me. Uh, they are very innovative.